number one most of the time won't win the ball. So I go up to press here, he'll probably pass it off somewhere else. But it's what number two player does and what number three player does and what number four player does. And I would expect by the time you get to number three or number four player that you've won the ball back. Well, for me, first and foremost, was something relatively simple, which the players who I don't know would pick up quite quickly. But what they needed to show was a good attitude and a good energy and enthusiasm to it. I think pressing at the moment is a big part of football. Many teams are trying to do it and they're having to do it because the proof is showing that, you know, if you win the ball back earlier up the field, it's leading to more goals as it did do in the Champions League this year. And I also think that uh, it's, it's important for young players to understand, you know, that, you know, getting after the ball and winning it back. And I think this morning the players showed a great attitude, the young players, and, uh, and overall they, they've done everything we asked of them. Got to defend as well. Good. And again, he's got it again. All the balls is going that way. Well done and rest. I think you do choose your moments to press, but I think for what we wanted to do this morning for the young players was to show them, and for the, the coaches who are watching, is to say, here's a session which works uh, with pressing. This gives them, this affects their mentality and how they think they should go about it. And I think the reason for sending uh, like one player in first is to say, the first player who goes, it's probably a bit of a thankless task. You, you may not win the ball, there's a good chance you don't get it. But the rewards for it is if we're winning the ball back much quicker up the pitch, it's giving you much more chances of scoring goals. So I certainly believe that most centre forwards would rather play that way than maybe wait till they get the ball at different moments. But I think more importantly, it's a, it's a team session and it's to make sure that the team are pressing together, not just the forward players, the midfield players behind it. Then it, it incorporates the defenders as well. And to go into deeper depth than it would actually be talking about, you know, how far in should the defenders go, when should they go, uh, should they follow people all the way in. So I think depending on, on the group of players you've got and the age group of players you've got, you can decide what amount of detail they need to be given. Just there. Ah, that's it. Now that's the distance you should be away from them. Well, I actually qualified as a, a fully qualified coach when I was 22. That was before the pro licence was in place and uh, I, I attended the, the SFA, the Scottish Football Association, who had great coaching courses and, and more importantly had great coaches, you know, people like Andy Roxburgh, you know, there was Walter Smith, Alex Ferguson, Jim McLean, uh, people who were real big, big names in Scottish football, gave up so much time uh, to help people like myself and other coaches uh, improve. So my, my main aim when I first done it was actually to become a better player. I was anxious to become a better player and, and hopefully the coaching and when I understood more it would make me a better player. Ultimately what it done is it gave me a love for coaching and a love for you know, working with players and seeing it. And uh, over the years I've had to keep it going but, uh, but I had a great start and, and really fortunate that the people who taught me and the people who I worked with were very good. What I would say is you're not going to allow the ball to get played forward. So for me to stop the ball getting played forward, I need to get in close. Player development's massive it, it, anywhere, but I also believe, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in players uh, uh, progressing themselves as well. Coaches are there to help them develop, but if the players don't pick it up and don't pick up on, on what they're told, then you tend to find that they, they, don't, they don't pick it up at all. And I actually do believe that the best players, you know, once you tell them once and say, here's something you should try to do, or this is something you should be looking to do, I do believe that, uh, that the top players pick that up and, and sort of get it in the locker and, and, and move on. If you show a really good attitude to work and get the ball back. OK, so you've done that. OK, we're going to take it into the last game. Well, I think, first and foremost, that you, you need the players to have a love for the game. I think my biggest thing is I'm, I've got a love for the game and I always have had. I think you need the players to have that. I think you need them to be improving and working to work to improve. But, I, but what I mean by my answer is to say that I do think that the players need to step up themselves. It can't always be down to the coach. The coach is not necessarily going to make the player. The player has to do it himself. The coach is there to help them, to give them every opportunity to do so, to put on the sessions like today we've done and to pick up and understand what they should be doing. There's a moment where you had them like that. When you get them like that, then you're trying to keep them going that way. He got a chance to turn and get back round and look at you again. 
Well, you set your standards, I believe, throughout your throughout your career, and you you try to to keep keep them up. You know exactly what you're looking for from the players. I think more importantly, you, you want your standard of training to be very good. You want the players, the level of commitment and uh, to be very good. And I think you're really keen to work with players who are energetic and, and want to want to help and show that they want to get better as well. I think the days where you know coaches can work with players who are maybe not that way, I don't think works now. I think players have really got to be keen to learn and improve as well. But I think to, to continue your improvement, you have to keep going out to look. Even even now in the roles I've had, I think the big thing is not to sit behind the desk and think that that's it, you've made it when you get a good job. I think it's it's finding ways. And I think young coaches you know, like watching a session today, like watching similar sessions. I think it's a way of improving. I spent years and years on the road trying to go and watch clubs train or countries train. Uh, I went to different international seminars all around Europe to try and find out more. But I think nowadays, because of programmes like this and, and the coaching that you can find out there, I think there's other ways you can, you can look to find and improve. Go that way. If I've got him facing this way like the small games, what did we say? If you can just touch the bottom of his back, you're close enough to him. I don't need to be doing this. So just enough to see the ball. So if he turns either way, then I've got a chance of taking it off him.